How to achieve perfectly centered and size capsular axis using Patwadhan capsular axis marker. CCC popularized by Gimbel and Nuhan, it has several surgical and post operative advantages. A properly sized and well centered capsular axis with a 360 degree overlap prevents optic decentration, tilt, PCO, anti-capsular opacification and increases the consistency of effective lens position. Hence, a satisfactory capsular axis is essential for a satisfactory long term post operative refractive outcome. Different methods for heading capsular axis are there such as mark capsular axis forceps, intracameral caliper, a technological solution that has overlay reference ring in surgeon's view. There is also femto second capsular axis which is highly accurate but still very expensive and it has a tedious process. Dr. Burjor Banaji introduced Banaji capsular axis marker. It proved useful guide performing capsular axis but it required presence of good red glow to appreciate the indentation marks on cornea. I modified the marker with 8 projections on the under surface when used with gentian violet staining it did not require presence of good red glow to appreciate the marks on cornea. The upper surface of the marker has crosshair for centration and the under surface has 8 projections. This can be stained using simple marker pen. Patient is asked to look at the microscope's light or in case the patient is not able to fix, we have to use limbs forceps to center the globe and then marking is done on the cornea. Immediately cornea is washed to avoid smudging of the stain. Capsular excess is now performed using either cystitome or capsular excess forceps as per the preference of the surgeon. Care is taken to follow the marks on the cornea. During capsular axis, the Purkinje image is kept at the center as much as possible to avoid the effect of parallax. Parallax is difference in the apparent position of the object when viewed from different angles. Purkinje reflex and the capsule are at the same level while the corneal marking is at different level. As the globe tilts down here, the capsular axis and the Purkinje image appear superiorly decentered. While as the globe tilts upwards, you can see opposite happening. The same thing will happen on the right and left side. So to avoid parallax causing decentration of the axis, we have to keep the Purkinje image exactly at the center while performing the capsular axis, which we can see now here. As the globe tilts a bit, you can see the Purkinje image shifting on right side. So you do not know whether your capsular axis is exactly on the marks or not. In such case, we have to center the globe, keep the Purkinje image as center as possible and then complete the axis. If this can be done during performing capsular axis, we can achieve a good centered axis all the time like here in this case. First important question will be how to center our capsular axis. Which landmark to use? The ideal will be visual axis but the available landmarks are center of the pupil and vertex or the first Purkinje image. To understand the relationship between visual axis, center of pupil and Purkinje image we can see this line diagram where you can see all three are different entities. Visual axis lies somewhere in between the pupillary axis which goes through the center of the pupil and the vertex or Purkinje image which goes to the center of the corneal curvature. As you can see here, as we see through the microscope, there is a geometric center of the pupil which goes through the pupillary axis. There is a vertex image which is a bright point and there is the visual axis might be lying somewhere between the two. In most of the cases, pupillary center and the vertex are very close, but in case there is a significant difference, it is better to shift the marker towards the Purkinje image which is indicative of visual axis. We will have a look at some cases. In this case, you can see that the Purkinje image is nasally shifted, but still will go ahead with the marking around the pupillary center. Now we'll perform CCC according to our marking which we have achieved. 
But when IOL is put, what we find is the IOL optic appears nasally decentered. So if we would have decentered our capsule rex is slightly nasally according to the vertex, it would have been better centered on the optic. Now we'll have a look at the second case where you can see that the Purkinje image or the vertex is slightly nasally shifted. And now we have done centration around this Purkinje image. And then we perform CCC which is slightly nasally decentered. But what we find here that the though the capsule rex is, is slightly nasally decentered, it is perfectly centered on the optic of the IOL. How to size the capsule rex is? Size of the marker is 6 mm. It is important to understand the effect of corneal magnification factor. Because cornea is a convex lens, it magnifies the underneath structures. Magnification can be calculated by this simple formula. As you can see here, as the antechamber depth increases and corneal power increases, the magnification becomes more and more. To simplify, we can use this table. If we want to achieve CCC of 5 to 5.5 mm size, we have to stay on the marks. If 4.5 to 5 mm is to be achieved, if ACD is normal, we have to stay just inside the marks. But if ACD is more, then we have to stay on the marks. If we have to achieve a smaller size, then we have to stay well within the marks equidistant from all the sides. Let's have a look at some of the cases. Here, the size of AMREXIS is around 4 to 4.5 mm. Here, instead of staining, we are going to use just indentation on the cornea because there is a good glow which can be seen. As the REXIS size M is smaller, we have to stay well within the marks and try to be equidistant from all the sides as we have achieved here and we can see at the end of the surgery the rexis is of desired size of around 4 to 4.5 mm but we should never exceed the marks if it is exceeded there is a chance that that part of the optic may not be overlapped completely by capsule rexis as seen in this case if we want to achieve consistent size of 5 to 5.5 mm, we have to always stay on the mark and then we can achieve consistent capsule rexis of 5 to 5.5 mm size. In this case, though capsule rexis has been made along the mark, it appears too small because the pupil is too dilated. But if you see at the end of the surgery after IL implantation, we have in fact achieved a good 5 mm rexis which is well centered on the optic of the IOL. This is a good use of using capsule rexis marker. The same is the case in cases of small pupil where we do not know whether we have to go under the pupil or we have to stay at the pupillary margin. Marker helps me in achieving a good capsule rexis in this case as well, which can be seen after IOL implantation where multifocal rings can be seen well centered and the capsule axis appears to be of adequate size. In cases of intumescent cataracts, many times we do a smaller capsule axis to avoid extension. But if we have achieved CCC within the marks, then we can always revise this CCC using a simple needle or spatula to make a nick and then extending this capsulorexis using a microcapsulorexis forceps. At the end, we can achieve a very good satisfactory capsulorexis which is well centered and covering the optic 360 degree. So important things to remember is to center around the vertex that is first particular reflex. Prevent parallax by keeping the globe centered and do not exceed the marks. Thank you.